Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Sona Ahuja, Associate Professor. We will talk about interaction with learners for dispelling mathematics phobia and coping with failure. And through this, we would try to answer these questions. What is mathematics phobia? What are its causes? And how a teacher can help the learner to cope with the failures? To begin with, I would like to tell you we should not have mathematics phobia because mathematics has a beauty to express any idea in the most precise and concise way. Even if you don't have sufficient words to express yourself, mathematics gives you the precise way to communicate your ideas and views. You just have to say that 2 plus 2 is 4. You need not go into the language mess saying that two objects added with another two objects gives us the four objects. So that simple the maths is. Now we would start with what is mathematics phobia. It is only a fear that exists in the minds of the students that I can't do maths. It has nothing to do with any kind of disease. It, as I told you, it exists only in the minds of the learners that maths is something from which I should fear and it is a subject which I can never learn. This is what mathematics phobia is. So just an illusion in the minds of the learners. Now let's try to see that what can it lead to. Mathematics phobia can easily translate into students exhibiting anxiety. Oh maths, I can never do this. Mathematics, not for me. And this leads to a lack of involvement and even at times some behavioral issues like getting nervous, adrenaline rush in the body as soon as one hears about mathematics. Now what are the possible causes which leads to this kind of phobia? To begin with, mathematics phobia begins with the lack of conceptual clarity. When a student is not able to understand the basic concepts of maths, he is not able to deal with the fundamental operations of mathematics, he starts developing this fear. And then it is the responsibility of the teacher that she has to take the responsibility to overcome this fear of the learner. She has to be positive. If teacher doesn't have the positive attitude, then this lack of conceptual clarity adds to the fear of the student that I can never do maths. Usually in the classroom, a teacher tends to attend only the bright learners. So the slow learners or those who fear mathematics think that we can never do it. See some other students are able to do it and we are not able to do it. So this is not my cup of tea. But this is not true. A teacher can truly help such students provided she is determined to believe that maths is not something which we need to fear. So a teacher's negative attitude adds to the mathematics fear and to the mathematics phobia. And this in turn leads to the negative experiences in the minds of the learners. That is, I am not able to perform this. I will not be able to answer teacher's questions. So maths is not for me at all. And this in turn leads to the poor maths performance of the learner. That is, he doesn't even try to do, to solve the problems of the mathematics, to identify what are his exact problems connected to mathematics. And thus, he is not able to perform in the tests. So this leads to the poor maths performance. These are the basic causes that lead to the mathematics phobia. So once we know what are the causes that lead to mathematics phobia, a teacher can help the learner to cope with the failures. But how? What strategies teacher should adopt to help the learner to cope with the failures and how he should interact with the student so that he does, has no more the fear for the subject. So now before taking any action, we require change in the perspective, change in the perspective of the teacher. Teacher has to first believe that it is not the subject that has the problem, but it is the help which was not given to the learner and is required by the learner. So teacher has to first change 
his own mindset that every student can do maths provided he is given the right guidance. And then it leads to the change in the mindset of the learner that is once the teacher is determined that it is not the student or it is not the subject but it is the way the things were communicated to the students that lead to this kind of fear. Then teacher can change the mindset of the learner by making him believe that he can solve mathematics problems. Now how we can change, bring this change that is the perspective of the teacher. So teacher has to be first passionate and positive about the subject. So these positive vibes flow to the students. Teacher should believe that mathematics is a subject which every student should know about. So once the teacher is passionate about this subject and is positive that every learner can do it, this brings the change in the mindset and this is the first step to remove the phobia. Then she has to believe that with the help of teacher, with right kind of strategies, teacher can help students to solve their problem and thus every learner can do maths. Then there are individual differences. There are certain students in the class who are bright learners. So they may adopt all the conceptual framework, all the procedures, all the problem solving things very easily. Then there are average learners for whom the entire strategies are designed. And then there are third kind of students in the classroom who are slow learners because of the negative experiences and because of the lack of conceptual clarity they are not able to perform in the maths problems and they are not able to solve maths problems. So this is to be understood by the teacher and the student as well that everyone's pace of learning is not same and that there are individual differences which lead to this. Plus teacher has to see that if a student makes the errors, then he is not to be graded negatively only for that, but those errors can lead us to the success. That is, we can identify that student has committed this mistake. So this is the area of the weakness and this is where he requires help. So errors are not the mistakes which student can take as a burden. But these are just the steps towards the rectification and can help students improve. And then teacher has to deal patiently with the problems of the student and has to adopt the strategies. For this, teacher may have to take extra classes. Remedial teaching may be required to be provided to the learner. So teacher has to deal patiently with such learners and understand what are the needs of the learners and then provide guidance accordingly. Now, to begin with, when we adopt the strategic solutions, we should first strengthen the basic skills of the learner. Prepare a diagnostic tool. That is, this tool is separate from the academic achievement test. You prepare simple questions addressing the area that we are dealing with. For example, you are dealing with trigonometry. So just use simple uh, sin theta, cos theta angles, the ratio, hypotenuse, opposite and the triangles, use the triangles, figures and then try to identify whether it is with the angles, it is with the ratio that student is not able to deal with or if we go to the simpler level, for example, we are teaching profit and loss, the student is not able to solve the sum, perhaps he has not the clear concept of the conditions which lead to profit and the conditions which lead to loss. He is not able to differentiate between cost price and the selling price. So we need to identify where exactly the problem is. At times it happens that student is able to identify between the concepts but he is poor at performing the basic operations that is the subtraction and division addition and so on. And he thinks that I am not able to solve problem because I don't know how to do it. But the problem lies in the basic operations of mathematics. So teacher has to first of all identify where the problem lies and this can be done using the diagnostic tools. And this has to be based on the minimum outcomes of the learning corresponding to the level of the learner. For example, NCRT has very clearly defined minimum levels of learning, they call it MLL. A student of class 4 has set of learning levels which he needs to know before entering class 4. 
So while preparing diagnostic tests, teacher has to see to it that the student is able to solve the problems before the grade he has passed on. If he's in class four, so he's able to solve the problems of class three. And if he has no problem in that, then teacher can go ahead with class four problems. But if student has some problems in class three problems itself, that means there is lack of conceptual clarity, which is required as previous knowledge for the new knowledge. So we should begin with the minimum levels of learning while trying to identify the weakness areas of the learners. Then after diagnosing the specific areas of weakness of the learners, do the error analysis. That is in the error analysis where student makes the mistakes. It is in performing the arithmetic operations. It is in the formulae or it is in the steps or it is in the understanding of the number system. So where the student makes the errors, depending on the error analysis and exact identification of the area where student requires the help, you design the remediation plan. And you identify that we have to remove the weakness of the learner in this area first and the next level and the third level. So gradually we have to move. So this design of the remediation plan can be a successful strategy to improve the learner's performance and help him solve the problems. Now, once the student has solved the problem, learned the basic areas where he was weak in, then provide him opportunity to practice those problems and master essential skills for computational fluency. By just clarifying his doubts, he may have the concepts, but he may not master it. Drill is the key in mathematics learning. So we need to make him practice that concept over and over again till the time he masters the concept. And this will help him to strengthen his basic skills. And then build the confidence. As they say, success succeeds like nothing. So move from the simple problems to the complicated ones. Once he is able to solve the simple problems, that is even below the minimum levels of learning, he has the feeling that he can solve maths problems. And then he is prepared for more complicated problems. So we should move from easy to difficult while helping this learner. And then adopt small step approach. Don't try to teach all the concepts at a time. Start with one concept, cover entire problems, entire areas related to that concepts like formulae and operations, basic arithmetical operations and then go to the next concept. At times in mathematics there are problems which involve number of concepts and multiple concepts lead to more confusion in the minds of the learners. So it is required that we deal one concept at a time. After giving the stimulus or content to the learner, give him a question to assess whether he is able to solve that, give the feedback, reinforcement and then go to the subcontent. that is the next subcontent. and this is the small step approach. Then use positive reinforcers which work very well with the minds of the learners when they believe that they don't know that they can't do mathematics. So positive reinforcers also we have to use very carefully that is we should not always say very good then it loses its worth. Use variety of positive reinforcers like nodding your head, giving a smile or saying good, excellent, right, correct depending on the difficulty level of the problem that you have given to the student and this will help him build his confidence. Try to make teaching learning process more interesting. Teacher has to be very clear what she is aiming to for the present class. Very clearly define learning objectives and according to each objective design the instructional strategies. Instructional strategies may vary for the objective if we have more than four objectives to be covered in the classroom. For example, making the students define the concept of profit, making students define the concept of loss, 
making students identify the conditions for profit, making students identify the condition for loss, making, enabling students to identify the formula for profit and loss, and then differentiating between the two concepts. So although it seems very simple that we have to teach profit and loss in classroom, but it involves different objectives. Now while defining what should be your instructional objectives, that is you want student to define the concept profit or loss, then your in instructional strategy will be different. And when you want to make him identify the formula, you may use the inductive approach. And when you want to assess the learner, you may use drill technique to make him master the skill after assessment. So your instructional strategies will vary according to the learning objectives. So one specific, one just lecture method won't suffice to this. So adopt instructional strategies based on your learning objectives and try to vary the instructional strategies. This will make learning more interesting. Then, as discussed earlier, you need to master the methods and the models of teaching. Not every topic can be taught using just one method. There are different methods of mathematics teaching like inductive method, deductive method. Often students think that we should either use inductive or deductive, but no, they are wrong. We should use the combination of two methods. Inductive method helps them to identify how the generalization has come, to make them conclude the principle, observation of the principle. But then they require the mastery over that concept and this can be done through deductive method. So the combination of two methods is required. Now this may not work in the areas like teaching them theorems or some axioms. There you require to adopt analysis synthesis method. So not every topic has the same method. So you need to identify which topic you want to teach and then select the appropriate method. So as a teacher, you should first master the methods. Then the models of teaching as given by Bruce Joyce and Marsha Weil are also quite useful to make your teaching interesting. While giving them a concept, you can give a lot of examples. You can present exemplars and non-exemplars and then make students identify the attributes which differentiate the exemplars and the non-exemplars. And after identifying the attributes, they themselves can define the concept. And this is what is the concept attainment model given by Bruce Joyce and Marsha Vale in the information processing model, family of models of teaching. So depending on the topic, please select the method and the models of teaching rather than using problem solving method or lecture method for all different topics of teaching. Then use the probing scale. That is, when you are teaching the student, if student is not able to answer your question, then simplify your question. Make it more easier. Take him towards the answer. When you take him towards the answer, that is you are giving the clue or probe to the answer, then you are using your probing skill. This is very much required because as soon as you ask a question in the classroom and student is not able to answer the question, he again thinks that I can't do maths. So make it simple for him, simplify the question and probe till the time he is able to answer. So use probing skill to involve students in the process of learning. Then use the application based approach. If mathematics is taught independently just by the formula and the concept, it may be difficult for student to absorb the abstractness of the subject. Use good examples that say where mathematics has application. For example, students often worry about the chapters like trigonometry and heightened distance because they think that these are the abstract concepts. Where does it have application? So you can start with the models and pose a question that this is the problem with me. For example, you can ask a student that I have to make a big circus plot and then I have to, you know, grow the grass in the entire area. But how much grass should I have with me? Uh, or how much fencing should I do for that area? Things like that. Then which topic of mathematics can help me to solve this? Then maybe he can relate it with the circle. 
So use models, use teaching learning materials that depict that this is where you can apply this concept and then help learner to identify the application of the abstract concept and visualize the concept in the real life that is by solving the problems. So use application based approach and problem solving approach to make your teaching learning more interesting. Then most of us have this saying that teaching is a simple thing teacher explains and student learns. That is teacher at the giving end and student is at the receiving end so it becomes very easy. But that's not true. These days there is paradigm shift from teaching to learning. You have to focus more on the learning than on teaching. That is student should be actively involved in the process of learning. And this will help to avoid focus on cramming and shift to the focus on understanding. Once we just give them lectures, they may not be able to process the concepts. So at the end of the day, they just try to cram the concepts. That is why they, you must have seen students just, you know, turning their pages and, you know, cramming and rote memorization this has led to. And you may have seen a set of students who are totally free and prepared just before the exam. Because they have understood the concept and they have not crammed the concept. So avoid the focus on cramming and shift it to understanding. Should, students should be able to absorb the abstractness of the concept. This can be done by increasing the learner participation. Make the learner the focus of the learning. That is, all your concepts should be taught not just by lecture method but student-centered methods. He should be actively involved. Ask questions in the classroom. So when you begin with your lesson, ask introductory questions. Try to relate the previous knowledge of the learner with the new knowledge. Then ask developmentary questions. Involve the learner in developing the lesson. Ask the questions which may take the learner to the concept that you want to teach him. As we discussed right now, for example, concept attainment model. Let there be maximum pupil talk in the classroom rather than teacher talk. Ned A. Flanders in his interaction analysis has clearly mentioned that there are three types of talks in the classroom. One is teacher talk, another is pupil talk and then there is silence or confusion. So we should avoid silence and confusion but also we should try to reduce the teacher talk and we should maximize the student talk. Allow students to talk among themselves, allow them to talk to you, allow them to initiate their ideas, share their ideas and participate in the process of learning. Use the discovery approach. Let the student discover the rule or the formula or the generalization that you want to teach rather than just writing the formula. For example, you want to teach students that the ratio of circumference of the circle and diameter is pi. So rather than just giving this concept to the student, you give them some teaching aids, some models, circles, models of circles. Make them measure the circumference of the circle, make them uh, prepare the observation table, then they should find out the diameter, they should find out the ratio of circumference and the diameter and as they do for one circle, they can do for two to three circles and then they can themselves identify what is the ratio of the circumference of the circle and the diameter of the circle. And this they would never forget because they have discovered. Similarly, many a times we try to teach the simple concept like the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. Why just tell them this? Make them discover. Take them to mathematics lab. Give them different types of triangles, acute angle triangle, obtuse angle triangle, right angle triangle. Make them measure the angles, all the three angles. Prepare the observation table. Find out the sum of the three angles of a triangle in different situations for different types of angles. And let them conclude the generalization that the sum of the angles of triangle is 180 degree. This way, they will never forget the concept Plus, they will be the active participants in the process of learning and even if they have forgotten the generalization, they will never forget the process.
So they can repeat the process and find out the rule again. All the rules of mathematics can be taught by involving the learner in the classroom and making him discover the concept. So prospective teachers, everyone can do maths. It's not only the bright learner's cup of tea, but every student can solve all the problems of mathematics and so of life. It is just the change in the perspective of the teacher and learner that is required. Let's see how much you have learned. Try to answer these questions. What is mathematics phobia? What are its causes? And discuss with examples how will you help students to cope with failures and dispelling mathematics phobia. Thank you.